math video. Oh, I've been waiting so long. It's here. Yeah. Woohoo. Uh, woo yeah, I don't know what that means. Hey, look at this algebra. Lesson 1.11. Oh my goodness, we're right near the end of this chapter. We only, I think, have maybe one more lesson. Yes. Okay, let's take a look at our topic today. It is evaluate numerical expressions. Okay. Yeah. This is going to be really exciting. I've done this before. It is fun. And look at our learning target, our essential question. It states, in what order must operations be evaluated to find the solution to a problem? Ooh, that's a great, great question. It is, because in math, we're always doing, you know, different operations. It's like we're doctors. Come on, let's get in there and let's operate. Yes, but on numbers. Anyway, we have a connect here. It says, remember that a numerical expression is a mathematical phrase that uses only numbers and operation symbols. Okay, I'll try to keep that in mind. What do we have over here? We have some numbers here. It looks like we have the difference of 5 and 2 times 7. We have 72 divided by 9 plus 16. Ooh. And then we have the difference of 24 and 15 plus 32. Okay, so what should I do first here? It says, okay, order of operations does say, number one, we perform operations in parentheses. You know parentheses, those little brackets we use in math. It says that we do that, number one. Then it says, number two, that we multiply and divide from left to right. Okay. And then it says that we add and subtract from left to right. So they haven't listed all of the order of operations, but when those items come in our problem, this is the order that we do them. Now it says to evaluate or find the value of a numerical expression with more than one operation, you must follow rules called the order of operations. Okay, that's what we were looking at. The order of operations tells you in what order you should evaluate an expression. And you may be sitting back there in your nice easy chair, drinking a nice little glass of milk with your cookies. Nice. And you may be thinking about Mr. Wara. What is the order of operations? Why is there an order of operating? Aha, because if you look above, you see, we have 72 divided by 9 plus 16. Well, should we divide 72 divided by 9 or should we not and do 9 plus 16? And the reason we do the order of operations is, you guessed it, you're going to get different answers if you don't follow the rules, okay? Very, very good. So let's go ahead and come down and take a look. Of course, you know we can't do any of this. We just can't, unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends. It's real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Here it says a bread recipe calls for four cups of wheat flour and two cups of rye flour. To triple the recipe, how many cups of flour are needed at all? Okay, cool. And look at that. Oh, I know what you're probably thinking. Mr. Warrow, we don't have bread over on our page. How'd you get that bread? Yeah, my crew in the back working on my video helped me out with that. You know, so which is uh, pretty... Wait a second here. That's bread, but what? This looks like a tail. Is there something underneath my bread? Ah! It's a rat. Oh, my goodness. A rat was going after my bread. Hey, buddy. What are you doing here? Get out of my bread. Ah! Okay. Oh, no. Look, I got rid of him, and he came right back. How'd you do that? Okay, hey, get out of there, tail. Goodbye. Oh, my goodness. Mr. Wara, you really should think about, oh, I don't know, <laughs> maybe taking a couple weeks vacation. Maybe, okay. But I'm going to continue nonetheless. It says evaluate, and it says that we have 3 times 4 plus 3 times 2 to find the total number of cups. So I'm looking at this expression, 3 times 4 plus 3 times 2, and I'm thinking about that whole order. Or, blah, 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 blah. I'm thinking of the order of operations, and I'm wondering, well, that expression represents the problem we just had, right? Because it did ask that we triple the recipe, and triple means three times. It does, and so we're taking our four cups of wheat flour, and we're going to multiply that with three, and... Then it says we're going to triple the two cups of rye flour. So that's why we have three times two. That's what that expression means. 
Now it does say here, Gabriela did not follow the order of operations correctly. Uh oh. Sorry, Gabriela. And so let's see what happened here. Well, she first she first it says I added. Okay. Mm, no, 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 no. Yeah, not good. Not good. Because our order of operations and if you haven't heard, there's a actually a pretty sneaky way to remember the order of operations. Some of you may have actually heard it. Most people just say PEMDAS. That's what they say now. We used to memorize it as, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's probably the most popular one out there. But a lot of people just say, oh, PEMDAS, they can remember that. And the P stands for the parentheses, which we had above. We don't have any parentheses here. We have to follow that order. We don't have exponents, so that we were just starting to learn about exponents in previous lessons. But then we have multiply, divide, add and subtract. And remember up above it said in the order in which they come. So if multiply comes before division, we multiply. But it also says that if division comes before multiply in a problem, then we divide. It's like these two guys here, they're like in this, they're a tie, you know? So multiply doesn't get to be any better than divide, okay? However, they completely outrank these guys here, because the add and subtract, they're the last things that you do. And look what Gabriela did. She added before she multiplied. Oops. Hey, it's okay. It's how we learn. Not even a big deal. So then she multiplied, you see, got three times seven times two, and we're ending up with 42. So explain why Gabriela's answer is not correct. Well, I think we kind of said it. Her answer, I'll just write this down, is incorrect because she added before she multiplied. Simple as that, my friends. It's not really that complicated. It was just a simple little rule, and she didn't follow. Now it says follow the order of operations by multiplying first and then adding. Should we put our name on there? Okay, let's put us. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's not just me. We're together, you guys. Come on. Fifth graders rock. Yeah, okay. Now, three times four plus three times two means we have to multiply first. So three times four is 12. Put my plus there. Three times two is six. And look at that. First, I multiplied. And then I'm gonna be taking my 12 plus six, which is equal to 18. Then I added. What, what? You're saying I forgot my D? I don't know, it looks good to me. <laughs> what, huh? Oh, what, you saying that I changed it, erased it? I don't know. I didn't see anything. <laughs> so that would mean that 18 cups of flour are needed. Girl, that was pretty fast, that first page. Let's move on. Bing! Okay, check this out. Mm, looks like some yummy granola. Okay, what? Oh, you don't have that in your page? I know, thanks to my good old video crew back there. Thanks, guys. Anyway, evaluate expressions with parentheses. To evaluate an expression with parentheses, Follow the order of operations, which I'm going to write down right here. PEMDAS. Yes. Whew. Now, perform the operations in the parentheses first. Yeah, that's why the P is first. It is right there in the front. Multiply from left to right, key. Then add and subtract from left to right. Just like we do when we read. We read from left to right. We solve math problems from left to right. Now, example. This is each batch of granola Lena makes. Uses three cups of oats, one cup of raisins, and two cups of nuts. Mm. Lena wants to make five batches of granola. How many cups of oats, raisins, and nuts will she need in all? Woo! What a great question. I mean, she must be having some friends over and they're going to have a granola party or something like that. So, write the expression. We have five times, ooh, and it has the sum of. Whenever I see these parentheses right here, hello, hello there parentheses. I think this is the sum because I have addition signs inside. So I say the sum of three, one, and two, okay? We wrote that expression down, and why do we have the five? Because we need to make five batches. It's like the, like the triple, but it's like five times as much. Then we have to first perform the operations in the parentheses, okay? Well, three plus one plus two, well, I'm sure you guys know that is six. There we go. So now we have five times, and then we have six. We just multiply. 30. I know my times table. And then it says, well, so Lena will use 30 cups of oats, raisins, and nuts and all. And you know, that almost looks like what we have here in our bowl right there. 
Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, try that new thing. I used to say, woohoo! Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see how it works. So let's continue here then. It says reason quantitatively, okay, with numbers and how much. What if Lena makes four batches? Ooh, will this change the numerical expression? Explain. Well, of course it's going to change. We're using different numbers, my goodness. Okay, calm down, Mr. Wara. Breathe. Okay, I'm breathing. So, I would say that first of all, let me see if I can remember this problem without heading back up there. So, Lena makes four batches. So, she had really five batches. So, the, I'm just going to write this down over here. So, I can remember that expression. I remember it in my head already when that was the expression. So, will this change the numerical expression? Well, yes, it will because we're going to now have to write rather than five batches, we're going to only have four batches. So, it's going to be four times the three cups, the one cup, and the two cups. So that's going to definitely change the numerical expression. Like my dot. Okay, did I explain? I did. Uh, Lena will only be making four batches or or four times the, and we say the original recipe. I don't know if that was the original recipe, but the initial one that she had, but she decided she wanted to make more. Try this. Rewrite the expression with parentheses to equal the given value. Oh, cool. We have to figure out where they go. Ooh, I like problems like this. A says 6 plus 12 times 8 minus 3. Whoo! Value 141. So they're saying all of this here is going to have a value of 141. Evaluate the expression without the parentheses. Good idea. So if we were to do it without, let's see. I know that I would have 6 plus, and I would need to multiply because multiply happens before, right? Addition or subtraction. So 12 times 8. It's 96, so this would be 96 minus 3. Now, if I were to keep going, now I have, whoa, that's 102 minus 3. Because I'm doing my addition first here, and if I take 3 away, I end up with 99. So I evaluated the expression, and I did not get the answer, 141. Try placing the parentheses in the expression so the value is 141. Think. Will the placement of the parentheses increase or decrease the value of the expression? It will increase it now that I think about it because if we put parentheses here, 6 plus 12, that's going to be 18 times 8 minus 3. That's not what we had up here. We had 6 plus 96. Well, 18 times 8, 6, what is that? 144. Yeah, because 8 and 8 is your 64. Carry your 6, 8, yeah. 144 and then we have minus 3. Oh, the beauty. Yes, 141. It did. So it did increase the value by putting the parentheses here. It changed it. It did say use order of operations to check your work. I didn't read that, but that is kind of what we just did, right? We sure did. And we proved it. Oh, that was so much fun. Yes, and I'm just so glad there's another one. Now it says to evaluate the expression without the parentheses. Again, we're always thinking PEMDAS. Always. Whenever we do order of operations. I can't stress how important that is. Yes? Oh, you mean I can express how important it is? I sure can. There you go. There's my fun bell there. My real bell in my recording studio. Well, sort of. So if I do division and I have addition and subtraction, I have three things going on there. I'm going to want to divide first before I add or subtract. So if I were to write that, I'm just going to write 5 plus, And then 28 divided by 7 is going to equal 4, because I know our time is variable, minus 4. Now I have to add before I subtract here in order of operation. So it's kind of a tie. So that's going to be 9. And then 9 minus 4. And of course, that's going to be 5. And as you can see, that is a big problem. It is, because we want to have it equal 11. But again, it says try placing the parentheses in the expression so that the value is 11. You know, we could actually put parentheses in different numbers. I'm going to try these first two. That might not necessarily mean the correct way to do it. But 5 plus 28, you know what? That is going to be 33. 33 divided by 7 minus 4. Now that's not so friendly anymore. Ooh, I don't like that one. I have to have a fraction? Hmm. Mr. War is wondering if maybe <laughs> we should have used parentheses around the other ones. Would that be friendlier? Let me see. So if I put parentheses around the 7 and the 4, now I have 5 plus 28, which is our number 33, 
and then I'm going to divide the difference of 7 and 4, which is 3. And now 33 divided by 3 equals 11. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Oh, there you go. That's what we're looking for. And the only reason why I decided to do it this way was that 33 divided by 7, really, in reality, would have given us 33 over 7 minus 4. And for some reason, I just didn't think that they were going to give you a problem that difficult. Surely this problem could be solved, but they're probably not going to give you that one in fifth grade. Not yet, anyway. But you guys are getting close. Oh, my goodness. No. Was that music I heard in the background? Oh, don't tell me it's true. It's true, Mr. Mark. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Like that. Snap your fingers, and you know what? You've got yourself a, the end of a video. Oh, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me. I hope this video was helpful to you. Please feel free to leave any feedback to suggest to make better math videos or just to comment. All I can say is fifth grade rocks, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.